Hello again, everybody. This is Craig Evans of Autism Hangout, and thank you for tuning into this Autism Hangout Beyond the Headlines feature program. Can autism be effectively treated with diet? Parents resoundingly say yes, but science, for some reason, says no. But the science, if you look more closely, is clearly incomplete. And in the words of today's guest, it's long past time for parents and professionals to get on the same page and treat autism as a medical disorder instead of a genetic behavioral abnormality. Autism Hangout, please welcome today's special guest, the author of The Encyclopedia of Dietary Interventions for the Treatment of Autism and Related Disorders, Karen Sarusi. Karen, welcome to Autism Hangout. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Karen, I learned of you again this morning in a blog entry on Age of Autism, and I, I noticed now that you've got a petition going against a current piece of research that was released. We're going to get into that in a moment. But the more I look at your background, the more I realize that for the past eight years, you have been an outstanding proponent, a zealot actually, in talking about diet to help treat some of the symptoms of autism. But in this light of uh, the latest research, it looks like the government is yet to buy in on the tens of thousands of success stories from parents. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I've actually been doing this since 1995. My son was diagnosed with autism uh, at the tender age of 19 months, actually. He got a very early diagnosis, but he was pretty profoundly affected. And we stumbled on some of these uh, biomedical um, interventions, including dietary interventions, very early. So we saw a complete reversal of his autistic symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't call it a cure because he still has the underlying disorder that causes autism, but mm -hmm. um, he certainly has, has uh, lost his diagnosis and is indistinguishable from his peers. Mm -hmm. um, he's almost 17 now, he's applying to college, and he's just doing great. You would never pick him out as somebody who had once had autism. So since around 1996-97, I have been, um, I, I wrote a book and I've been lecturing and just came out with a second book. And I have met an extraordinary number of parents now, um, followed up with a lot of them, heard thousands of success stories um, mm -hmm. of treating autism with mm -hmm. dietary interventions. Mm -hmm. Every year that we've said, oh, okay, the medical community is bound to get on board now. Mm -hmm. All of these case studies, all of these testimonials, all of these um, clinical reports from physicians, all of these studies, because there are a lot of studies out there right now, mm -hmm. um, clearly showing a connection be between autism um, and food intolerance, autism and gastrointestinal illness, mm -hmm. uh, autism and metabolic problems. It's hard to go to any gathering of parents of kids on the spectrum and not find a couple of advocates like yourself that say gluten-free, casein-free is the way to go because conditions change so radically once the diet changes. Well, let's talk specifically about this piece of research that just came out that is saying that the, the government is now saying, the scientists are now saying that there is no proof whatsoever that the change in diet helps our kids' symptoms. Yeah, and it's so funny that they could translate um, one poorly designed uh, inadequate study of 14 children, that they can name that as the reason that there is no proof or that diet doesn't work. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the obvious conclusion is this study did not show an effect from dietary changes. Uh, somehow or other, it turned into a study proves that the diet, uh, the dietary changes for autism doesn't work. I was called in as a consultation on this study. Uh, it was sponsored by the NIH, and it was conducted at um, the University of Rochester, which is a very prestigious in institution. And when I was asked uh, to review the, um, the study design, I said flat out that this is not going to um, this is not going to find an effect between autism and diet. The duration is too short. The design is is woefully um, flawed. And, uh, and taxpayers paid $7 million for a study of four, uh, 14 children Wow! Um, that did not find anything. After going through a number of your websites, you have been compiling uh, positive proof uh, for literally for years. In fact, let's give the name of the website at this point in time where you have compiled all this research. Mm -hmm. Now that's autismbiomed.com. Mm -hmm. That's A U T I S M B I O M E D. Autismbiomed.com. There are over a hundred studies showing a connection between diet and autism, gastrointestinal illness and autism. So I just decided that's it. I'm tired of hearing that there's no evidence, there's no proof. And I started 
um, cutting and pasting scientific abstracts. And on this website, um, I think at this point, all a parent needs to do is get on that website, buy a whole ream of, of uh, printer paper, and print <laughs> up the whole darn thing, and start handing packets out to their doctors. <laughs> yeah, there's literally got to be hundreds of pages, but you've actually taken it a step further. You've started a petition. Can we talk about the petition for a moment? Yeah, um, the petition is, well, there are two petitions. One was for um, practitioners, clinical uh, practitioners, medical doctors, a lot of MDs, nutritionists, um, nurses, um, and any professional who's been working with autistic children. And then there's a, a parent. Uh, petition which has over 600 uh, signatures so far mm -hmm. and when that number reaches 2,000 and that should be quite easy because I know there are tens of thousands of, of parents doing this diet um, we're going to print up and present this um, petition to the National Institutes of Health uh, I really think it's about time that they see that we're not talking about a couple of oddball parents saying yeah. that wishful thinking they think their kids gotten better there are some very very dramatic improvements and recoveries from from this, you know this intervention well and there's so much more evidence of that as you see people are leaving comments on the petition in fact let's talk about these now that you mentioned the two petitions i took a closer look at the one where the parents were signing there was 623 as of this this morning and uh Here's, here's an example. I mean, I'm just going to read a few of these. From Utah, my son with autism went from barely being able to put two words together to eight word sentences in just three weeks after starting a gluten-free, casein-free diet. His preschool teachers were shocked and amazed and couldn't believe their ears. An aide at the school was so impressed, she began her autistic son in the diet as well and experienced similar results. Although no one treatment or diet will help all children, there are many who see significant measurable benefits from this diet. My son is now mainstreamed and is in the second grade and he is living proof of this. And there's one more. The gluten-free, casein-free diet lifted the fog from my child's brain. She is now a fully functioning, fully verbal social third grader. We've been on this diet now for five years. The parents have figured out that this works it's time for the scientists to figure out why. There's so many sentiments out of the 600 people that mirror this. What were some of the comments the doctors were leaving? Here's one from a fairly well-known pediatric immunologist in Louisiana. She writes, I can vouch from personal experience that many children on the autism spectrum, as well as neurotypical children, have reactions to milk and wheat that are immunologically mediated but not diagnosable with currently avail available tests. Most of these children improve markedly after the withdrawal of milk and wheat from the diet. Here we have an MD from Georgia. As a practitioner working with autistic children, children on the autism spectrum and their families, I am certain without a doubt that diet can be a significant intervention of action for this population. I'll read a couple more. Um, okay. Arkansas, I am a board certified biochemical and clinical geneticist and a pediatrician. I've been aware of diet responders for the past 18 years and have treated many. A positive response to elimination diets and nutritional supplements and relapse with challenge is incontrovertible. Mm. Um, Illinois, the GFCF diet has been one of the most beneficial treatments for autism in my practice. So, and there are, you know, 60 of those as well. I know. The anecdotal evidence is just absolutely overwhelming, and each of them has already done their own research on the job. Uh, Karen, where are, let's give the web addresses that people can go to check out more about this petition. Where can uh, parents such as myself go? Well, um, I've, I've got a website called KarenSarusi.com. Okay. And uh, there are links to the petition. There are links to the um, Autism Biomed site uh, where you can look at um, these lists of abstracts, as well as some of my favorite links. Karen, you know the truth. I know the truth. The doctors and the people that are writing in are giving more evidence of the truth. What can we do to help others in the autism community learn the truth so they can at least experiment with gluten-free, casein-free, and other interventions uh, for their kids? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult question because I, I've been doing this for a long time and, and there were moments where I just wanted to grab people by the lapels and say, you know, this child has every symptom of gastrointestinal distress and you have to try this diet. Um, but for a lot of parents, um, only, um, only information from their doctor is going to convince them to try it. So I, I think the key is to make sure information is out there, to lay it out in a very sort of um, 
know, sort of reasonable and practical way mm -hmm. and um, make sure that people know that there's access to the science, to the studies. Um, and just bit by bit, one pediatrician at a time, one parent at a time, just, um, yeah, just let people know that this is out there. I mean, there aren't just one or two recovered kids. There are thousands of recovered yeah. kids now. And yeah. uh, that's, that's a lot when you, when you think about the fact that 15 years ago, autism was considered to be a rare, genetic, untreatable brain abnormality. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about this, this new book that you've written. Lisa Lewis, who is the author of a great book called Special Diets for Special Kids, um, she and I teamed up around 1998 uh, and started writing a newsletter, a parent support newsletter. We got a couple thousand subscribers. It was clear that there was a lot of interest. We started getting letters, thousands of letters. Uh, we estimated at one point that we had reached the 40,000 letter mark. Oh my. Uh, yeah. We saw a lot of patterns. We saw a lot of uh, people saying, Karen, uh, you could have been writing about my son. Uh, the diarrhea, the, um, the red ears after eating certain foods, the mm -hmm. same story with the pediatricians, the same symptoms of regression, um, and, uh, and the same uh, improvement when diet was started. Mm -hmm. Um, and Lisa was getting hundreds of emails, thousands of emails, thanking her for the recipes and the information because she was really one of the first people out there, uh, one of the first people with knowledge of the internet um, to, to get it, uh, the information up online. She actually had the first autism diet website. Anyway, Lisa and I um, have been accumulating data, coming up with recipes, listening to cooking tips, making notes of things. We published a newsletter for 10 years. And uh, we just decided that if we were ever going to go on and have normal lives, we needed to take everything that we knew and put it into a book. And not just the kind of book that parents would buy and stick on the shelves because it was too exhausting to read it, but a book that was very, um, very easy to use, um, where there was just a short uh, first section that just explained why the diet was necessary, how to do it, what to look for, how to stop doing it if it wasn't working. Um, you know, three stages of getting started. And, uh, and then a part two, which is basically, um, we call it an encyclopedia, but it's basically a big glossary with um, alphabetical with entries everywhere from one sentence to three pages long mm -hmm. on every subject you can think of having mm -hmm. to do with uh, dietary and, and in many cases just biomedical interventions. And I know that you're so interested in getting this message out there that you're offering it uh, at least part one free with Kindle. Yeah, if you have a Kindle um, and you uh, search for um, Encyclopedia of Dietary Interventions um, and then you click uh, Download Sample, you will actually get the entire um, part one of the book and a little bit of the encyclopedia. Excellent. Karen, I want to thank you for all that you do for our families and for our special kids. You, you clearly have done more than just a layman's job here with the amount of information that you've compiled and, and I commend you for that. I thank you for that, for especially for all the parents. I thank you for coming on Autism Hangout today and telling us your story and if something new develops, I hope you come back and update us as to what's going on with you. Thank you. That would be a pleasure. And thank you Autism Hangout. I'll be back again soon with another Beyond the Headlines special report.